Sometimes in my projects, I need uh, an object to move left and right, or maybe in a circular pattern in space. And the software I use, VDMX, it's real-time based, so there's no timeline or um, objects along a path. So in order to make things move in a pattern in space, I use LFOs to do that, and I'll show you what that means. Okay, here we are in VDMX, and I've got the Workspace Inspector open. I'll choose Plugins at the top here. And then at the bottom of this panel, I'll choose the plus sign and LFO. This will open up this graph. Let's expand it so you can see what's going on. So we've got a timeline, and all these different lines on the graph are the different waveforms in the LFO panel. So to simplify this, let's get rid of ramp, and I'll do the same with waveform. So we're left with sine and cosine. A sine and cosine are basically the same pattern. They're just offset a little bit in time. So now we need something to move in a circle. So I'll go back to layers and then under use source, I'm just going to use something simple. So I'll choose uh, ISF uh, sources, geometry, and heart. Let's make it the right shape and make it a little bit smaller so we can move it around. Under layer one effects, I'll add geometry adjustment and I'll choose X, uh, Y, zoom. I'll move these sliders down a little bit to make the, the width and the height the right size. Okay, now that it's the right size, I want to move it around. So in order to move things around, I want to add another layer one effects. I'll choose geometry adjustment, and I'll choose layer position. So under layer position, you see that you have an X position and a Y position for left and right and up and down. So I need to limit the left and right and up and down to just the area of the screen that we're seeing. So I'm going to drag from the left. When I do that, you'll see there's this little black dot this is the minimum, and then over here is the maximum. I can kind of move these in, and if I scrub between them, you can see where the edge of the screen is, or where the edge of this movement is. I'll do the same with Y. Okay, once I've got those in a space that I like, I can right-click the X position, go to Use Data Source, and then choose the LFO cosine. And now you'll see that the heart is moving along the X plane, you know, at the rate of the LFO. Under the Y position, I'll choose the LFO and sign. Okay, and so now it's moving up and down as the left and right is moving, and so it's creating the circular pattern. And now I can adjust it so that it's kind of closer to the middle maybe. Maybe I want the X position to be very wide and the Y position to be very uh, short, and then that gives us more of an ellipse. I can change the rate to make this faster make it really fast. I can make it go the opposite direction by going the other way on the rate. Make it go really fast in the opposite direction. Another thing you can do is add a second LFO. So under plugins, I'll choose the plus sign and then add another LFO. Maybe this LFO is super fast. And then I can take the Y position and assign that to the second LFO. And now I've got this like zigzag effect. So that's a way to add variation to the movement is to add different LFOs to diff different shapes, change your minimum and maximums. I can also use LFOs to control the size. So under um, layer one and layer one effects, I'll add another geometry adjustment. At the very bottom, there's a uh, zoom. And this allows me to control the X and the Y at the same time. So I'll change the center point to the middle here. And I really only want it to get a little bit bigger and a little bit smaller as it goes in an ellipse. So I'll move the maximum way over and the minimum just a little bit lower than the level that we're at. I'll right click level and then, and then choose LFO and sign and I'll adjust it. And I can even change the center point. Okay, so now it feels like the heart is coming at us and moving away from us uh, at the rate of the LFO. Okay, well, I hope that was mildly entertaining, maybe a little bit informative. Um, thanks to all my social media followers and my, my Patreon supporters. If you like this kind of thing and you want to see more of it, you can support me at Patreon, and I'll have a link somewhere, and you can do that. All right, see you next time.